nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed, make me sound like a chipmunk, and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device and you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps so if you are on a desktop you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well you can also enable subtitles and the little cc on the screen will enable closed captioning that way if i am a little bit harder to understand and with that double playback speed, the subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Oh, hi. I forgot to do the thumbnail. Wait a minute, here we go. Okay, sorry about that. Hello, how's it going? Hi, Barbara, nice to see you. <clears throat> hi, Raquel, hi, Lisa, hi, Shem, hey, Malin. Hey, Claire, how's it going? I haven't seen you in a bit. You having a good summer? I'm just getting my <clears throat> labels together here. You know, so I don't forget them because they're gonna go in really close to the end since um, it's a waist facing. I also decided to cut some binding for my facing. Hi, Hannah, hey, Margaret. And, um, but I can overlock one and top stitch it down if you guys want. So we're making the cargo shorts. I'm gonna do two pairs. So it's going to, um, There'll be longer sewing days, but at least it gives you a couple chances to see the same step if you want. So I'm gonna try and sew them both along the way back to back. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice feels very weak today. <laughs> Hopefully it's not going to be tickly. Uh, I will do the butt patch on one and at the very end on Saturday, I'll, oh wait, maybe today, uh, well, there'll, there'll probably be a snap tutorial or not a tutorial, but I'm just going to put my snaps in. So anyway, um, let me, let me sew my binding together and I'm going to pin my labels to it. This is why I'm going to sew it together first. So I decided to do the last scrap of the menu for the, let me do a really small stitch. That way I don't have to back tack. Uh, and then uh, I, I didn't really want to cut up my last piece, my the remaining piece of the rip stop. So I went with this right here. So, you know, team lurk noise. And then this way I used up all of this fabric, which, you know me, I really like doing that. Let's see, we're going to put this one on here. I'm really trying to use up the labels, you know? I loved the advent calendar. I don't think I'd get it again, only because it, it feels like a lot of labels and I have a lot of labels. <laughs> but I feel like it's a very affordable way to get a lot of labels if you're considering it next year or this year. I, f I think I've even seen them for sale already. Hey, Eliza, how's it going? All right, put it back to the regular stitch length. Why is this thread way over here? What are you caught on? I'll just 
pull all this down there and keep an eye on it for a second. Uh, I threaded my serger with three threads, which I never ever do. This serger does a nice three thread stitch though. And I typically don't do three thread because it's just, I don't know, it just doesn't look very nice. Uh, one side definitely looks nicer than the other, but if you pay attention to how you orient it, um, you'll see the nicer side for the most part, where you can. You know, like sometimes you just can't. All right, I have my list. I made a little cheat sheet. So we're gonna do the belt loops and the pocket flaps first. I'm gonna try and go in order of the direction. So if you wanna follow along, I'm gonna swap the order of one thing only to make it easier and less junk to manage on your sewing table. And that um, difference is going to be doing the fly before the side seam and cargo pocket because it's unnecessary to have the side seams and cargo pockets sewn before the fly. And I know some folks don't really like sewing fly zippers. I feel like it'll, it, it doesn't matter if you like sewing them or not. It's just going to be a lot easier to manage just your fronts when you do the fly. So hi, Jackie. Welcome. Why three rather than four? Three what? What did I say? <laughs> hi, Curtis. Good afternoon. Three rather than four. What did I say, Eliza? Rather three rather than four. Oh, three thread rather than four thread? Because I only have four spools. And I usually require six <laughs> spools in order to sew. I need two for my industrial so that I have one on the bobbin winder. And then um, I need four on my serger. So I have one on my industrial and three on my serger. I, I kind of struggled to find threads that I, I like. So nice, Curtis, you did. <laughs> Um, how much, I'm, I think the only overlocking I'll reposition the camera for is the fly. Is there any other surging you want to see? How does she do, actually, I should look and see how she sets the, 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 I know how I would sew this. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Yeah, we're just going to overlock one side of this. It's not my favorite way. I don't really like doing that because it makes your top stitching crooked sometimes. So let's just, let's try and do a, let's try and do a tube. I don't think that's gonna work on this fabric here. We'll try it on the ripstop. <laughs> Got my loop turner just in case. Making sure my stitch length is okay. Everything looks good. Uh, what's my needle situation? So I'm just going to sew this right sides together and turn it because the fabric is lightweight enough that I think that I can turn it. Oh, nice, Curtis. Did you rewatch our Zoom? <laughs> Tomorrow is pattern chatter. Um, I actually don't know what time that is. It's either, well, what I would do is look in the guild and see what time it is for you in your time zone. Ooh, this is going to be tough to turn. I can tell. It's not lightweight enough. Hi, Terry. I didn't see that. Oh, good serger thread. Um, do I go over? I went over so much in that. I explained the difference thoroughly, pretty sure. But really, it's just um, the amount of thread in your seam. A four thread's going to give you a slightly nicer look. Let's just trim this down. Serger thread. You know, there, there are so few, like, choices, to be honest, that I would go with the thing that's readily available to you in the colors that you like because um, of availability, you know what I mean? One thing that a lot of people don't, myself included, um, one thing that I feel like if a lot of people for, don't realize when they buy a serger is that you now have to buy a lot of thread. And the thread can really be expensive, but I will say it's a lot, cheaper than, than the, the little spools you use on your home sewing machine. Zooms are always fun. Yeah, I think it's the early time, 7 p.m. in Europe. Oh, okay, so it's in the morning for me. 
There we go. I just had to get this started and then it's going to be all fine as long as I don't let it get hung up right here. All right, so this experiment isn't going great, but it's going to be worth it. This isn't that hard. Oh man, I lost it. Maybe not. Have you cut your PJs? <laughs> The, the busy bees. Yeah, exactly. And so my, um, I gave a lot of, I gave a lot of tips on thread, I think, in the serger confidence. We went over so much. It was actually, I felt like it was a really good one because I had an agenda, I stuck to it, and I got a lot in there. All practical stuff. I got better at using my serger because of it. <laughs> oh, okay, Raquel. Um, I have never bought serger thread on there. MaxiLock is a really trusted brand. I, I've bought MaxiLock. Maxi what kinds of sewing do you like to do, Raquel? Yeah, are you in the U.S.? Because I would do way whack, honestly. Or a sale on Joann's. Come on, let's just get this going. It'll be fine once it gets going. I want at least one of these sewn and turned this way. This is why you don't do carriers like this. <laughs> there we go, I got it. There's this little, you can't do a whole lot. You just gotta get it sliding over a little bit. I always recommend getting black, off-white, white, navy blue and gray. Or you can do what Elena does and you get like a, a variegated. <laughs> yeah, way back, okay, Jan's getting dusty and smaller hair, yeah. Your pr problem is changing colors. Do you know that, that little trick gene of tying off your spools and then pulling them through? Because that is really the key. The only time you really have to cut, like, rep like pull out all your threads and thread from scratch um, is maybe if you're having a lot of issues getting like the tension right or something like came unthreaded and you're like, oh shoot, now I don't trust anything. <laughs> Oh, I meant, yeah, beige, off-white, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Red is also a good one, honestly, because red, you really can't use any of those colors on red, like black, navy, cream, white, or gray. So, but I used to sew everything with cream. <laughs> like everything. <laughs> All right, so what if we did the, the old um, strap trick like this? I like that idea. All right, let's go to the iron and we'll iron this. I, mean, I have to move my face cam to rotate my computer. I need a chopstick, but I think there's one over here. Chopstick, where's my chopstick? I'm kind of an advanced beginner. Do you have a video that shows how to do it correctly? Hmm. I'm not sure I do on my YouTube channel. Maybe like somewhere buried in a live stream, which that's not very helpful to you. Um, you're not in my guild by chance, are you? Because if you're in my guild, which I have a, a free community, and if you're kind of a beginner, you might not be up for joining something like that. You're probably still trying to figure out who you like to get information from and who you want to support. Um, but I did a serger confidence video in there or live stream and it's recorded and I went over all of that um, you might find it in your manual do you still have your manual by any chance if you are around um, maybe towards the end today or on Saturday at the end I'm happy to show you. I'm not gonna do it right now because I want to kind of get sewing. But if you remind me, I am happy to show you. Yeah, because I know like it's it's kind of, um, it's so simple that it seems intimidating in some ways because you're like, it can't be that easy. <laughs> You would you were gifted your mom's printing it. That's a nice gift. Do you have the manual? If you don't have the manual, 
Um, I know it sounds so sewing teacher-ish to say, consult the manual, but I'm telling you, I'm gonna tell you, like last year I was doing this whole button and buttonhole thing for my guild. And I have had my home sewing machine for almost 20 years. I've had it like maybe for like 16 or 17 years. And I just learned last year that it does an automatic buttonhole because I didn't read my manual all the way through. So um, I learned the most surprising things in there <laughs> about the things I own. So if you can't find your manual, you can probably download it on the internet for free. I mean, I'm hoping it's free, you know but worth it. Oh, my face cam's still okay. Oh, there you go, yeah. Yeah, go through the manual, check it out. It's actually, the manual's usually really, really cool. Like, it's, it's kind of neat what they tell you in there. Um, all right, I'm just gonna, I just folded this like this. So this is one way to your carrier if you can't turn it right, like right side out with a loop turner. And now I'm just gonna edge stitch on both sides. We're not going to use these for a while. We're just getting them ready, and then they're ready when we're when we're ready. Let's not immortalize these threads here. I'm trying to see what this thread looks like. This is why I don't like top stitching canvas. It looks terrible sometimes. Let's go down the other side. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, look at that, I missed it right here. Well, that's a bummer. Let's just take this out right here, this little section. Part of me, if you weren't watching me, I would probably just stitch it again without removing these stitches. <laughs> I'm honest. That's another thing I don't like about a canvas. You know what I could do? I can open this up, open up this fold, and maybe remove the stitches like that right here. And it'll be a little faster, maybe. Nodding didn't work for you, Elena, really? I find that sometimes they get caught in the tension discs. And if I'm pulling here, um, that, may, that may like make the knot break or something. And so then I pull close to the tension disc, just get it through that little spot. Or you can loosen up your tension when you pull it through. I know people are super scared about t changing their tension, but you really, really shouldn't be. But I know that just saying that you shouldn't be doesn't make you still scared of doing it because I know, I get nervous too. Oh, I didn't see, um, is there a new Margaret, Diane? <laughs> that was the regular Margaret. Regular Margaret. <laughs> I miss, you guys talked a lot. <clears throat> if I miss something, let me know. Oh, really? Oh, it's so much faster you start from the beginning. I mean, sometimes it's like that, right? Yeah, that's a bummer. I can see why you stick with the variegated, you know, because then you don't have to. <laughs> oh, I got a new sub. Oh, welcome, Margaret. Thank you. I know I don't I don't get the um, noise for the alert anymore. I used to. Is it still cute? <laughs> I love seeing it. All right, I'm really cheating here. <laughs> here we go. This right here looked suspicious right here. I knew. This is how sewing on my channel always goes. We get this really big project. We're all ready. We start the sewing and then Sammy has to seam rip for like 10 minutes.
Oh, that's good, Terry, I'm glad. They may not be watching live. They may have just like subscribed just, and it happened to be when I'm live, you know? We'll get in a groove in a second and it'll be fine. This is pretty annoying. Also, if you weren't watching, I'd probably just go recut this piece and sew it again. <laughs> I don't know why that doesn't work, Eliza, and I'm sorry. I just haven't been bothered to go and check why my commands don't work anymore. They work when I test them, and so that's what's annoying. Boo-boos. We used to call baby cows boos on the farm, me and my friend. We call them boo-boos, but boos for short. So when you said that, I'm like, yeah, boos do happen. <laughs> because we'd be driving by and we're like, look at the boo-boos. <laughs> I love baby cows, man. I love cows in general. They are just the sweetest creatures. They're so smart and docile, sassy, ornery too. They have magical powers where they can sense an open gate a mile away and somehow teleport to that open gate when you're not looking and walk through it and leave. If you know, you know. All right, here we go. Let's just re-cut this now, or re-sew this real quick. Get my little threads in there. Get rid of all this. Destroy the evidence, right? And we'll do it from this side so we don't miss it this time. There we go, there's one. And when we cut these apart, we can cut around this little back stitch probably. Cause you usually get more than you need. All right, this one is sewn. So we're just gonna sew on either side. Hopefully the little crease down the middle doesn't push my presser foot off. Probably going to try harder on belt loops than any other thing I sew on these. Yo! Already ran out of the bobbin. Cow is so much fun to ride. I don't think I've ever done that. <laughs> I gave myself new little stitching things. At least I um, ran out right there at the end. Always appreciated. Why are you stopping? You know why that did that is because right here, the seam allowance got stuck in my feed dogs. Cause you know what the smarter thing would have been to do for me was to press the seam open on this, then turn it right side out, like trim it, press it open, turn it. And then when I pressed it in uh, flat like this, I would have had a better time getting the seam allowance here pressed open on the inside. All right. We got our belt loops done and we won't need those for a while. I'm gonna just put those on all at the same time right before we do the waist facing. So now we're gonna do our flaps. So separate out your flap by one interface and one non-interface so that you have pairs. And we'll do those right sides together. All the seam allowances are 3 eighths of an inch, which is gonna prevent me from doing any flat belt seams, unfortunately. That would have been kind of nice on the center back seam. Honestly, I could probably still do it and it wouldn't bug the sizing for my husband very much. He don't, we'd only lose a quarter of an inch or a half inch total actually. Mm. I don't know, maybe that's too much. Hi Andrea, how's it going? Cam oh, the camera's stuck. What happened? Thank you for telling me. I'm 
stop that. Thanks for telling me. Let me fix it real quick. There we go. <clears throat> All right. Oh, thanks for subscribing, Jess. Jess. Jessica? When you get to pointed flaps like this, right now, you probably can't see it, but I can see my button and buttonhole marking right here. There's like a little um, cross right here. That's where I'm putting my needle to kind of sync up with this line. So it's kind of hard to tell where the point goes down. It's kind of an optical illusion when it's under your needle. But if it's helpful, what you can do is fold your flap in half because it's the likelihood of you cutting it perfectly symmetrical after, and then you've ironed it and all that or whatever is kind of low. And where you think this, this fold lines up with the seam line down here could be a little different than what it looks like. Help me if I miss something you need me to respond to in chat. I can tell you guys are talking to each other, so that's cool. We're on a mission today. Two pairs, cargo shorts. Didn't know I was making my husband a capsule wardrobe this summer. <laughs> but I guess I have. <laughs> my daughter just got a second job, and so uh, she might need shirts for that too that are a specific color. I'm like. All right, I'm gonna turn all my corner or trim all my corners. That stuff is thick. Can't tell if my cutting is kind of wonky or my sewing is kind of wonky. It's probably a little both. Let's let's prep our cargo pocket and then we can iron this all at the same time so we're not going back and forth. Oh, and I need to get this. Oh no, I don't. I was gonna say I need to uh, fill that bobbin, but. I only have one spool of thread. Okay, so can you see my, there's my, my button and buttonhole marking there. Um, this, let's see, how does this work? I think how you do this is that there's a pin tuck along one edge of your crease. So we're gonna line up the notch. Here, I'll do it on the lighter fabric so you can see better. So there's f two notches here and two notches over here, right? And so, you're going to, we're gonna create pleats here, but we're also gonna edge stitch the pleat. It's kind of a nice little touch. And so one of your pockets is gonna to go to the left and one of them's gonna to go to the right as far as the pleat, right? So we're gonna do one of them like this where it's gonna go like this and like this, right? And the other pocket's gonna go the other direction and we're gonna edge stitch this fold on each one. You can iron it first, it'll probably give you a nice, a little nicer result. I did iron my pockets. I know it doesn't look like it, but I did. Okay, so we have this one and see now when we fold this over 
matching our fold. We have the stitched pleat. So bring it over to the other notch. Try and keep the raw edges all lined up too. You'll get a straighter pleat. Just like that. And now we're gonna repeat for the others. So keep up with me. Let's see, let's go, um, <clears throat> let's pleat this one now this time. So you need to switch which one you stitch. can't do them all the same. <clears throat> you do have a left and a right. It is an asymmetrical thing. I like this color thread on here. I really had a thing against olive green for a really, really long time. I don't know why. Maybe it's just like being like a child in the 70s and like avocado appliances. I don't know. Just, I don't know what it was, but that, uh, like probably my first year of streaming and I did that sponsored stream for Hearts Fabric where I made, um, it was a hundred acts of sewing. I don't know what it was. It was a dress or something or tunic. It was a tunic and they sent kind of a olive green, not this dark, uh, olive green, um, I think the viscous linen and oil, which is such a great fabric. And I don't, I didn't get to keep that. I could have, I could have kept it like recently they offered it to me, but it was kind of short on me. <laughs> um, and I was really shocked when I saw how good that color looked on me. Wait, this is the uh, other one. I can tell which side of my stitching looks nicer, like my upper thread or my bobbin thread, you know? So that's why I was being kind of intentional. Yeah, you could, oh no, this, this, this does go this way though. Okay, never mind. I can't change that. <laughs> so it made me a little bit more open to olive green. I don't think I've made anything though for myself in olive green, have I? <laughs> Funnily but I'm less biased against it. And I got this for my husband. Trying to just clean up my little stitches, you know, see right here underneath when I, if I backstitch it'd be messy. If I don't backstitch it's gonna be messy. I didn't hold, I don't hold the thread when I start. So I get that little like thread vomit thing. And I, I kind of like that cleaned up cause that little tail sticks down and can sneak out. Oh, I just realized I made this crazy, um, whew. I made this true, true confession time. I made this crazy mistake on when I recorded the Franconia dress for Cash Marette. This dress, <laughs> this, this dress. <laughs> um, so when I record, I can set up like what you see on the screen with my frame and that little viewer count that I just enabled um, or like my my name underneath right there, you know, that kind of stuff. Those look like overlays, right? Um, I don't use that when I record someone else's thing. I like it to look like their company, you know what I mean? Well, <laughs> I have one set up specifically for Cashmere. Hi, Donna. Um, I would have, um, and like this, you see this right here. I don't usually do this for the cashmere. I have their cash, their logo right there. Just, I don't know, just, it's a nice little added touch, right? 
my ego is not big enough that it can't look like their stuff. Um, it's on my channel anyway, right? So I, when I came back from the iron and went and sat down, I can use my little stream deck to just press a button and change the scene, you know, from here to the machine. And I did that. And by out of habit, I chose my so-so one. And I didn't realize it. And I recorded like six of the 40 videos. Or no, it was not the, it wasn't the one I already did. It was this one, the Franconia. So it was like six of the 22 videos, right? And I was like, gosh darn it. Like I am not a pro at doing Photoshop junk in a, in a video, right? So I did that. I noticed it at one point, And so then I was like, oh weird, the viewer count's on. And it didn't click to me like that wouldn't be on unless I was on the wrong scene. So I had to do some really tricksy stuff and, and like cover it up. It was crazy. And I was prepared for them to be like, did you do something here? Like, I don't know how they would notice, you know, <laughs> but I was paranoid. Yeah. You're, uh, what'd you say? You're always interested in pocket plates. Oh yeah, I know. You could do them so many ways. I, the way I like to do cargo pleats is so that they can actually expand when you're wearing the pocket. These can expand. These can expand actually. They can expand in the center of your pocket, right? So they won't be able to expand where it's tethered down here but they can expand right here in the middle, right? They can do this. There's lots of ways to do it. A lot of times people do like inverted ones so they meet like this, right? Or they're box pleats so they look like this. There's a lot of ways to do it. <clears throat> and a lot. if this was even more, more like intentional, you would edge stitch this side too to keep this nice and crisp. Cargo pockets are an entire world of their own. Lots of ways to do it. That's why I gave you guys the most basic cargo pocket in the Pockets SBS. I'm just going to turn all these and then we're going to iron them. I think this is probably going to be a, a better stream for someone trying to iron or sew with me. Because you can kind of I'm going to be slow enough that you can probably be faster than me. Because I'm doing two pairs. How's it going, Donna? How are you been? Yeah, baffles, I think if you really want a true cargo pocket, you put a baffle in. Um, there's so many cargo pockets that you see on ready-to-wear clothing that aren't functional. They're just there for looks. They don't even expand like this. It'll just be sewn shut. We've actually sewn something like that on the channel. Remember that? What was that? And it was sewn shut, and I was like, wait a minute. This won't even expand. You do all this work and it doesn't even work. You can't put cargo. <laughs> all right. Let's kind of be honest about our pockets here. <laughs> See how well they look and how symmetrical they are. Test ourselves. It's good enough for me. Okay. Uh, lastly, I'm going to, if you like pressing your pocket uh, perimeter, you want to do that now because we're going to attach these. Uh, we're actually not going to attach these soon because I'm going to do this a little out of order. Um, where's my um, marking? Is that my marking? Yeah, that's my marking. 
Why is there no side? Um, here it is. Okay, so it's that much. All right. Oh, nice. Cool. You got, you got your summer going. I like to hear it. You guys had some heat over there in the UK recently, right? Someone in the guild was mentioning it. Be the boss here because these things are going to make you get a wiggly hem here. So tell it you're not accepting that. <laughs> We're going to check it. And see, <clears throat> this side is a little deeper, but my pocket matches top to bottom. Let's pull out a tiny bit of it. Okay. Oops, try not to pull on it like I keep doing. There's one. You can do the whole perimeter if you like to. You know, these three sides. I used to never check this because I just didn't want to know if it wasn't symmetrical. <laughs> How about you guys? <laughs> Sometimes, you know, we just don't want to know. Ah, oh, right, Terry. Do the hair marks still show after ironing? You know, um, it's not a marking on the fabric. The more you fiddle with it, though, it does disappear. Like, there's one right here I'll show you in just a second under the better camera so you can see it better. Um, it, it doesn't stay forever, if that's what you're wondering. But the iron doesn't... It's not like it gets rid of it, but more the more and more use it's going to fade. And so like on the ripstop, it's sticking around better than on the canvas. So here it is right. You can kind of see the faint. <laughs> That's it right there. It might be better on this side. Maybe this was, oh, this is probably actually the side I marked it on. It's a, a more prominent. And this would be what it looks like fresh. So yeah, it's not like I'm putting anything on the surface. It's just a dent. And I think if you did it too hard and if it was certain fabric, you could probably um, crease the fibers a little bit. Sorry. So, you know, I'd be careful on some things, but I've never seen it later on. And I sometimes use this little sharp point too. I'm so into this thing. <laughs> All right, are we going double rows today? Hmm. Can I get one more? Kind of. start here. I'm, I'm uh, more confident this way. Yes, the double rows. <laughs> uh, 
Every time my husband wears these, I really like the way they look. That's not a very good. Uh, I love the color of this thread on here. Top stitching is meh. <laughs> I saw, um, I opened TikTok yesterday. Oh shoot, dang it. Um, and, um, which I haven't in a bit. <clears throat> I'm just gonna take this out since it's so little. And I, apparently there might be a trend where people, trades people are sharing what they make as an hourly wage, you know? And uh, one of the trades people that shared their wage was a master tailor. That's what she called herself, a master tailor. Um, and she makes $120 an hour. I was like, wow, that's like the first time I've seen sewing, actual sewing, not pattern drafting or engineering or any of those other aspects. But the actual hands-on sewing pay a real wage. Like I know, I know personally know sewists that make a lot of money um, at, at, in a factory during piece rate. Like they actually made more than I did as a designer. <laughs> if it's hard, I know it's hard to believe, but people think it's not a good job. And I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. It isn't a good job in other countries. It can be a decent job in ours, so. But I was like, dang, that's pretty cool, $120 an hour. And I kind of just looked through a feed to see if she shared sewing content. And I think she does. But I saw so many bridal things in there, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, you more than deserve $120 an hour if you're doing bridal, you know? I should record that TikTok and send it to Libby. <laughs> She needs to upper rates. I don't know what they are though. <laughs> Where's that point at? Look, look at how messy the stitches on the canvas look. They're wiggly. Wiggly. Look at the rip stop. Look at the difference. See what I mean? Canvas is uh, not kind to, to your stop, top stitching sometimes. Especially like this where there's a diagonal. It's such a basic plain weave that is um, very um, prominent. Like the fibers are so big that they wove it with the yarns that um, you see every, oh, ah, you see every, um, you know, we, you know, stitch of the weaving. Is it stitches in weaving? Is it a stitch in weaving? It's in a stitch in knitting. No. What's that called? That's an interesting question. Is there an individual um, noun for one weave? Is it the camera or are your stitches short? What do you mean by short? I don't think I have any idea what your stitch length preference is. Uh, well, I don't know if it has anything to do with the camera, but um, it, I just have it at my regular stitch length. I'm not using top stitching thread. I'm just using Tex 40. So that's a little heavier than regular thread. I'm trying to keep it like simple with the, um, using the same color on two different <laughs> fabrics. If I had enough thread or I had a color I liked and I had enough, I would probably use two spools because I like the way that looks, like two strands of thread in my needle. I really like the way that looks. There's something about it. Ugh. 
Ugh. Not going to fix it. Warping web threads. But yeah, but like, like this right here, like this one little, you know, stitch, you know, one, one over one under that intersection when it's just one intersection, what's that called in weaving? <clears throat> you know, like in knitting, it's a continuous, it's a continuous yarn creating your fabric one stitch at a time. So I, I don't know in weaving if you call it, if you call it that. Um, all right, I'm going to overlock the top edge of my pockets. Sorry, you can't see this over here. I can turn it though a little bit like this. I probably will disconnect the camera though. <laughs> keep these pleats nice and straight perpendicular to that raw edge you know don't let them do this you know like pull open I'm exaggerating there but you know what I mean you know what I mean I know you know what I mean Yeah, right? Isn't that interesting? Well, not the weave. I want to know the individual spot. Like if you were to snag the warp or the weft thread in one spot, like are those, do, is there a singular term for each of these over-unders? <laughs> right, I'm going to hem my pocket. My, is my camera okay? So I've been like wiggling around. Would you like me to zoom in a little bit? It's not important. I was just kind of curious. Because I'm a very, 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 very curious person. Man, I just got a new dentist and he's not prepared for me. <laughs> Count per inch right in cross stitch well you would be cross stitching the ADA it counts right so like when you measure the cloth it's it's whatever counts right that's true I sort of want to do this from the wrong side so that I can get two rows I mean don't get me wrong my dentist was great I actually really really liked them um, but I had never like I had never been somewhere where they used the machine he had used and so I had so many questions. <laughs> I used to, oh, oh I ran out of bobbin thread again. I had, uh, sorry, I had like two half bobbins and one, and I had one whole bobbin, so. Why does the end half of a bobbin it's just like, it takes so much little time to use it where like you go through it so much faster than you would if you um, started like it, the, the first half. It's because the, the, the circumference around the bobbin is longer when it's fuller, right? I don't like back stitches. Don't judge me. I'm, I'm taking it out. I'm just a weirdo like that. Certain things I let slide, other things I don't let slide. I don't like visible back stitches. I just grabbed my serger thread. Okay, we'll just keep doing this on this side. Why is this so tight? I'm still thinking of that stitchery show. 
you know, I kind of decided I want to go because I just want to meet other people. That's it. That's the sentence. <laughs> I just want to meet other people that are passionate about sewing, you know? So could I just do a booth? Like, would it be worth doing a booth just to, I don't know. I could try and get a class, like to t try and request to teach a class. I just don't know what I would teach. I'm gonna try and loosen up. See, look at, I snagged my serger thread right there. See that? So it tightened it up right there. PPI picks per inch are number. Oh, uh, Donna with the answer. So look, I'm just gonna put my all back here and just loosen this up a little bit. See, there we go. It doesn't look great, but at least it's on the underside, right? And this side looks pretty much normal now. Maybe it's a pick. That actually sounds familiar. Yeah. Why don't you go as attendee? attendee? <sighs> hmm. I guess I could do that. I'm so much more awkward than you're giving me credit for, Shen. <laughs> Having a little home base sounds nice and safe. <laughs> I've never been there, so I don't know what kinds of classes are being taught and what people want. So I, that's why I haven't really looked at. Maybe I'll ask Jen Stern for her opinion. We're not gonna do a double row. Then I can mingle, yeah. Oh, maybe that's why it's called pick stitch. Oh, yeah. Good, good uh, thinking, Terry. God dang, we have not even put any work into our shorts yet. What would I hope to accomplish if I had to be? That is a really good question. What would I hope to accomplish? I would really like to meet other people kind of doing the sewing business thing. Yeah, Jen, I, I actually was like, Jen, could we share a booth? Do you get, I was like, do you get a booth? I don't know if you get a booth. I said, what if we got a booth and we share it and I could man the booth while you teach your classes? And she sometimes shares a booth, I think, with ditto form. So, I don't know, I have to put some thought into this. Well, let's, let's get on to something else. Let's do the front pockets now. Yep, we're gonna do front pockets now. Yep. We're gonna get all of our front pockets and our two fronts. Also don't want to be you know like mining Jen for all of her stuff like she has her own thing she needs to do she doesn't need to hold my hand safety and number sounds good <laughs> killed business cards <laughs> I don't even have a killed business card <laughs> What would you say, member? <laughs> okay, let's uh, part out all these pieces here. Maps to olive, menu to putty. All right. <laughs> I can't. Why are you doing that? I bought a new camera, you guys. I did. And then it came with a USB-C3, USB-C cable. A PC does not have a USB 
port. Sorry, I'm looking for this. I searched their website. No information on, oh, here's an adapter if you need one. I do not want to know why this seems like a very common thing that people would have this. I have never in my life seen a USB-C3 port, USB, whatever it is, port on anything but an iPhone. <laughs> I just froze it again. Yeah, so it's this right here. It's this connection right here. Okay, so I'm going to do this. And plug that back in like that. I think what was happening is I had um, another cord um, uh, like touching it, like pulling on it a tiny bit. So maybe it was pulling on that connection. Sorry. Yeah, so I have an adapter and it didn't work. I guess I should say that part too. So that's why I was like, all right, before I just start buying adapters, I wanna make sure I'm actually getting something that's compatible. Because it could be a um, the amount of information tra traveling through. I don't know. Oh, really, Donna? <laughs> My brand new computer I had I had built last year doesn't even have these. So I was like, okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, Shim. I think my problem is, what am I trying to market? Kind of like what Diane said, what's your goal, right? What am I trying to market? The Guild is free. So while I am marketing the Guild in some ways, why is this so big? Why is this so big? Um, I, it's not like that is my, that doesn't, that doesn't like, you know, make the money. Oh, I know why this is big. I trimmed away this little corner. Okay, so we're gonna, um, now you could overlock this edge or you can turn it under and top stitch it like this. That's what I'm gonna do. Just cause I'm tired of touching the camera. Yep, and, ha and I have them on my extra screen as well. It, isn't it the side front? Wait, what? Neither there's new. Really? That's so weird. Why doesn't my computer have that? Yeah, there, there it's true. But I don't think as many people join as you guys think. <laughs> and I think that, um, I guess the way I look at it, like, um, I forgot to change this pattern piece. So this is my bad. I forgot this piece has a facing, or not this piece, but the other one. I forgot the facing is like this. So usually a pocket, you know, you're used to doing like a jeans pocket and it has the curved facing. So I just forgot, my bad. So if you made your change, hopefully you have enough fabric if you would like this to go lower. This isn't gonna be a big deal. You could just finish this edge. You can even just turn it under right now and stitch it. It's gonna be fine. So. But shouldn't the pay there be what? Okay, so what, what I'm thinking is, why would they trust me? You know what I mean? why I am new there, there is going to be, I don't think you guys understand that there's probably some people there that are like rock stars in the sewing world there. <laughs> That's what I'm envisioning. And people that go every year and always have, like as far as like um, people like me or teachers or whatever. And so why would they trust me? Right? So marketing something like that, I wouldn't not say that. I just don't think that's what people are really looking for. They're looking to buy fabric and patterns. 
there are, um, okay, what is going on here? You know what? I actually don't need this piece on this one because it's the self. This is just a little facing to face this edge and I will be doing it on the canvas right here. So the canvas short, so this, you're gonna sew this right sides together. So I'm just gonna toss that piece. I don't need it. Everyone's simple. I know, I know. I'm not, I'm not like trying to, I'm being realistic, you guys. I'm just trying to be realistic, you know? Oh, thanks, Donna. <laughs> yeah, I sort of um, struggled with the pocket fabric in some ways, but it was really fun to pick it out. This is obviously a menu. <laughs> So like going back to Diane's question, like what do I want to get out of it? I think it's a really good question. And I think, um, and kind of building on what you originally sh said, Shim, why not just go and check it out, right? And so what if it was like, I'm there to suss it out, right? And see, is there a place for me here? Are there people that are interested in what I do? Whatever the heck that is, right? Because I could have a booth that has my YouTube channel playing in the background, right? I could be marketing that I sew or do how-to videos for people. But trust me, a lot of sewing companies just don't really have the money to spend on that. Um, I could market if you're interested in a community. We got what you want. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Raquel's right. Ooh. Maybe I shouldn't stream today. All I've done is seam rip and waste my precious thread. At least somebody's thinking. Now I'm really annoyed. I was kind of annoyed when I started. Now I'm even more annoyed. Yeah, I agree with you, you Diane. I definitely will talk to her. Let's let's just try and rip this at the same time. You know how it is when you're kind of agitated and then you go to seam rip and you make the worst choice possible. <laughs> Thank you, Raquel. Thanks for screaming. <clears throat> well, what Raquel means is that I like my fabric to show on the inside of the shorts. I was very particular about how I cut this out so that my fabric would show on the inside of my shorts. Where's my little ice cream cone? Here it is. This time I gotta get rid of these threads. So I'm just gonna get rid of them for the most part since they're so hard to see on the canvas. There we go. And that one I don't have to worry about, but I will have to do the other one. And the map, yeah, I know, and the map one. One painful thing at a time. <laughs> Typically, they will, people will call this, this right side and you put it on the inside, but only your hand sees it. So what's the point is my, is my point, right? Yeah, so you know what it is, Terry? The simple thing to think of it is, is that the print side of your fabric is the wrong side in the instructions. That's it. Once I thought of it that way, I was like, okay. <laughs> this is the right side, basically. Hi, Adina, how's it going? It's a seam ripping um, type of day. That's how it's going here. <laughs> I am constantly vacillating on what I should be doing. Like, I'll be honest with you guys, as far as like, uh, you know, yeah, I'm doing YouTube and stuff like that, but, um, so I'm just still trying to figure things out. And it's been five years and I'm tired of trying to figure it out. <laughs> okay. There are two. Let's just go this all the way through and then you can just fast forward when I fix those, 
So if you're watching this on the replay. So, um, oh, this one too is, is a fabric. I forgot. So if yours is also like pocket lining, what you're going to do is you're going to sew this right sides together right here, turn it, understitch it, and then top stitch it down. And it's gonna give you like a, a nice little pocket facing edge. I don't actually technically have to do that. Let's just do it. Um, because I used self fabrics, I didn't have enough of my print. So that's why. All right, so we'll just do this right sides together or whatever is you consider the right side. Oh no, Adina. That's a bummer. Why weren't they cooperating? I don't want to understitch this. I'm going to top stitch this. I'm not going to remove that. <laughs> We're going to iron that. All right, so we have uh, this one, and now we want this one. All right, let's go press these really quick. Because I'd much rather have top stitching, not under stitching on this. If you would like under stitching, you can. And then we're gonna turn it like this. Should probably um, either overlock that edge or I think I'm just gonna turn it under and top stitch it down. I really like clean finishes, but on the fabric like this, which is a little heavier, you might prefer, or you're, if you're doing something even heavier than me, which is quite possible, you might want to not turn it under because it's kind of heavy duty, you know? Right? Exactly, Raquel, that's the sewing fairy. Something's wrong. Maybe, you, may, did you cut anything out that maybe might not be quite right? <laughs> sewing fairy is trying to help you out. She can be kind of mean, but she's there to help, right? I hope. <laughs> All right, and I'm just gonna go like this. I'm actually gonna trim this. that. I don't get this. What is this? Why, why is this narrower up here? I'm going to modify this. I don't, I don't like it. Like that. That's going to look better on the right side. You, maybe you just leave that hanging free. I don't remember. Oops. This is the worst batch sewing I've ever done. <laughs> Two rows, yeah. I think I'm not doing this the way the instructions tell you. Besides, I mean, I know I am because I just trimmed it, but maybe you don't stitch this down. I thought you did. I think I'm confusing it with another pattern, to be honest. Yeah, that doesn't look right at all. And my top stitching is just atrocious. Oh, neat, Terry. I want to see that. All right, so now. What is happening here? What was that piece for?
Was it supposed to be a raw edge? Mm. Holy heck. This is why when I want to be like a cartoon and you know how they can mumble under their breath and they're just like chopping, picking, blah, 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 blah. This is so confusing. It's such a strange way to finish the, the edge. I think it's my, the problem is that I'm confusing it with another pattern that I've sewn before. And that, and it's my problem. I know it's not the pattern's problem. It's, it's me. It's me. I'm the problem. <clears throat> I used to have wine at work. <laughs> That was when me and Rayanne worked together, though. <laughs> Ay, caramba. If you don't have fabric to cut out, you're gonna be seam ripping. <laughs> and I'm sorry. It's just not the way I, I uh, realized it went and uh, it was just totally my fault. Sometimes my, <laughs> that was almost bad, huh? Did that go all the way? Yeah, I just got the paper. Sometimes my pattern drafting brain, I just, I don't, I don't shut it off and I, and I can't, you know, so. It's not that I know better. We just, people just do things differently. No, I just don't want to be streaming for three hours because it's gonna get hot in here. I mean, I would rather, I would love to be one of those people that can just like stream and that's all they got to do, but I don't get to just do that. Wait, really? The first time meaning the time just now? I think what you're supposed to do I just left the instructions over there, but aren't you supposed to go like this? Like, you're supposed to go lay this on here, raw edges together, right? Finish this down, and now you sew it right sides to the pant. Right, yes, what? Like what I just said just now? <clears throat> so I think you're supposed to just leave this raw, right? Let's iron this. <laughs> Yeah, and there, and I can't think of what pattern is uh, some, looks like this, but doesn't sew like this. What am I confusing this for? Something I've sewn a few times is it maybe the free range slacks? I feel like it's the free range slacks. This fabric just really doesn't take ironing very well. Did you see that? Like I ironed it, and then it just kind of popped all back up. <laughs> it's like boing. <clears throat> what is the purpose of the back yoke? Some of the patterns have them, some don't. Yeah, right, Andrea? The gift. The gift of overlock. Let's do it. <laughs> but this isn't the shape I want, I think. I think that I should have I should have thought that through. I'm not thinking anything through right now. The bunch was she okay, so a yoke, um, I personally think a yoke, there's a few reasons for it. 
I just curved that off. See that? Trimmed that off right there. Um, partly I think it's because it gives you an opportunity to put some pleats across a high stress area right there. I have the instructions. <laughs> I'm just being obstinate. <laughs> That's what this looks like. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Let do this one on this side. And this one on this side. And I have a left and a right. You are my witness. So the other thing I think about a yoke is that... Um, well, yeah, I guess you could consider it a way to pivot the dart to it, but a men's block doesn't have a dart, and I the, the button-up originated in menswear. There's a very good chance that the yoke was designed as a way to do something as simple as make it look good on a hanger. You know what I mean? Or a place to sew a label curve this a little sooner like that and then we're going to trim this like this and carumba a major pain in the booty all right see so now we have these raw edges right and so we're going to sew this right sides together like this and this is going to go to the inside of the short right yeah i know raquel i was just trying to get through one set so that the poor people watching this on replay would have a nice smooth <laughs> like version. But then I ruined it by um, sewing that wrong. So <laughs> and, and it's all this is redundant anyway because I'm using self fabric. So it's kind of equally annoying. See now we're going to turn this to the inside. Double top stitch the opening and then your top pocket is done. <laughs> Yeah, so you don't have to do a yoke. Um, I personally love yokes because I, I do like the opportunity that it presents. I like clean finishing the shoulder seams. I like um, the proportion, like breaking up the back a little bit, you know, and then being able to put that pleat. Because I do notice when there isn't that little pleat back there, giving a little bit extra it helps. seems just dumb that I faced this like fabric to me <laughs> but it will make the opening here a little more sturdy you know So now we're going to top stitch the opening however you want or under stitch it. I'm doing one row. Maybe I'll do two in a second. I don't know. Why'd that sound funny? It sounded funny. Okay, so now we're going to sew our pockets to our pockets. This is again, if you want your the decorative side of your pocket showing to the inside of your shorts, make sure you orient them that way. Oh yeah, Dina, then yeah, I would skip the yoke if you like a molded back. That's called a molded back, by the way. I love molded backs too. Yeah, because of the like hip tilt thing, you know. 
Okay, so um, you can sew this just like this and then overlock the edge. You can French seam it um, and enclose it, which is kind of what I'm gonna do right here. So I'm gonna take this, right? So this is how we want this to end, right? There's our little pocket facing there. So we're going to, it's kind of awkward. We're gonna take this and we're gonna put this like this, right? I wanna say right sides together, but it's technically this is wrong sides together. There you go. Shim's got the goods for you. trim this, clean it up a little bit. I have a weird pocket shape because I extended my pocket. Make them deeper. So if yours doesn't look like this, that's why I should have mentioned that. If you didn't watch the cutting video, you would not know that. But that was the only thing my husband said this time. He said, I really want the pockets to be deeper. It, it bugs him, I can tell. All right, and then we're gonna do this side because then we're gonna iron. Yeah, that's true. It is more sturdy, but it's not a hard wearing place. It could be if the shoulder seam, like they put that, um, the front shoulder seam forward, and then you have two layers on the shoulder, so if they have to carry a pack or something. catch all layers. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to trim. I uh, meant to tell you guys, so someone sent me a picture of the pattern pieces for the Donnie. This is about camp shirts. So I've gotten a few comments on my how to sew a camp collar shirt, like, um, oh, could I do this on the, on this pattern or that pattern or whatever, right? Or people have asked me, and I've gotten a few people talking about the Donnie by Friday Pattern Company. And um, partly, I, I, when I made my list of camp inspired shirts, I included the Donnie, because I think it's, I think it's adorable. And um, I think like, um, it does have that camp vibe, right? And they, I think they even call it that. It's not a camp collar though. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't want to seem like I'm calling something out, right? Um, hey Aisha, how's it going? The Donnie has a notched collar. All right, so now we're gonna turn this the other way. A notched collar is not a camp collar and um, it, you can't button it all the way up to the top of the neck. That is like, that's the one way. Cause if some, cause someone said, yes it is. And I was like, no, it's not. And that's, it's okay that it's not. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with a notched collar either. Um, but you can't button it all the way up. So that's the proof, right? And they have a really like simple way to sew it where they basically sandwich it. So, um, you don't really need the method that I provided, but you can use the method I provided. So I finally took a look at it, just I wanted to let you all know that it would work, but you don't have to do that. You could just use their method. Clean finishes it. It may not be like the so-called like traditional way to sew something like that, but that's not wrong gives you a nice finish and it's probably faster and less frustrating. All right. Last seam of my kind of French seam. 
Oh, cool. Oh, that'll be so cute as a dress. Oh my goodness. I'm rushing. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm rushing a little bit. Okay, here we go. Do, do, do. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Freaking pocket then. <laughs> Um, well, you, you can just do the center front the way they do it. Because they stop at that circle. So, yeah, that would be... Instead of, like, <clears throat> going all the way down the center front, you just stop at that circle. So, yeah, you could do it the same way. Unless there's something I'm missing, but... Um, I will admit, looking at inst sewing instructions on your phone is like one of the worst tortures. <laughs> Especially in the morning when I'm sitting in bed. <laughs> My eyes are like, ah. Okay. Um, in the instructions, they say to put your belt loop on here. I'm just going to do it all at the same time. So I'm just going to tack this on the side seam and the waist. Line these up. Don't force these to line up if they're not laying flat in here because you, it'll show on the outside. So just make sure it's all nice and flat and then um, tack it here. And uh, remember that this needs to stay out of the way when you sew your pocket down here, so. There we go, there's one. Let's see how it looks on the inside. <laughs> you still see it for now. It's gonna look like this, I think, though. Moo. Let's take a picture of it right now like this, though, just because it's funny. <laughs> it's something to share, right? <laughs> I hope he likes it. <laughs> um, all right, let's fix the map. So me and Raquel can feel better about this because <laughs> I think we both don't feel good about it right now. Oh, I'm sure it'll work out. It'll be really cute. Oh, I know. French seam pockets looks good. I mean, if you're going to show off the print right on the inside, you might as well clean finish it. Okay, this one I can't be too cavalier. This is a handkerchief, you know, so I don't want to risk it. The map is so much cuter and I don't really want to risk it. I think he'll like the map a lot. Especially he's a pretty big bike enthusiast. So I he's away right now interviewing for a job and um, I kind of counted on him not seeing. I wasn't going to like I wasn't going to post a little sneak peek like I did yesterday but I was like oh he's away he's not going to open Instagram. He did. So I'm sure he saw it. It's not a surprise. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Me. That's one of my favorite things is when I see how different languages do animal sounds. And I love the, when people hear what Americans do for rooster. They think that's hilarious. They're like, what? <laughs> or duck. <laughs> I think this is pattern's a little bit uh, cursed for me. Last year, I made these. I did the zipper fly wrong. Because I forgot it wasn't a waistband, that it was a facing. It's kind of haunted me ever since. And I've always felt bad for people referring to that video. And I thought this is my way of making it right. And um, yeah, I've kind of uh, messed it up just on pockets. These look so good too. The stitch length's kind of... You just said curse and jinx in the same comment. Maybe they will counteract each other. Or maybe I need to place a hex on it.
The frog, that's the other one they think is really funny. They're like, ribbit? <laughs> oh yeah, Shim. <laughs> Oh, you're going to add like a waist to your, your Donny dress, Malin? Oh, I, I don't know why I was picturing it like all like just going straight down. <clears throat> Sorry, my foot's on the pedal. I'll take it off or I'll let it go down. Almost there. There we go. Whew. All right. Hi, Amy. How's it going? Um, <clears throat> I, I was because I didn't see anything. I kind of looked at it today. I was like, all right, when do I do this? Um, I, maybe you're thinking about how I did it wrong last year, uh, Terry. Because remember, I forgot that it was a um, facing. Oh my gosh, speaking of second seasons, you guys, is there any sci-fi fans here? So, um, and if you have Apple Apple TV, Apple TV has some of the best shows. Um, there's this sci-fi show called uh, Foundation that is so good. And I didn't hear anyone talk about it. And I was just kind of like sad about it because I thought, oh man, there's, they're not gonna come out with a second season. And I just saw an ad for the second season. I'm so excited. It's hands down one of my favorite shows I've watched on there. There's another one called, um, another sci-fi one that's coming out before it. Uh, what's it called? That one's more of like an alien invasion on our earth right now. Yes, Aisha, there's, it's coming. It's coming. I loved it. I, it's a world I've never seen before. It's a hierarchy I've never seen before. It's so good. Love it. And the other one's really good too. It's more of a like, oh, this is Earth as we know it. And then, um, you know, bad things happen. Foundation is like way an, another world, another reality practically. <laughs> um, oh, you think it's too short for you? Did I lengthen mine? Yeah, I think you could totally do that I, either, either way. You know what I think, Andrea? It's very short-waisted. I very much feel big parade float vibes when I'm wearing it. Oh, I love Silo. Yeah, I can't believe, is that done right now? Cause I'm sad, that was a really good one. Foundation, better. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it, foundation, way better. It could be Malin, yeah, it is uh, based on a book. I think it is Isaac Asimov. Maybe I'll read those. I just love like the whole like uh, hierarchy thing of the clone um, emperors. That is, that is such a good, such a, um, not good, I mean it's bad, but it, it's a, 
unique. We're just gonna keep this pair lightweight all the way around um, with this rip stop. Just pulled a brand new make out of the washer and the Wayback Pro Fuse Flexible has... <gasps> No. Oh, you're short waisted, Andrea? Okay, so maybe that'll be okay. I still love, but I've made both views of the Mayo Soda dress, and I love them both. I don't mind feeling like a parade float. <laughs> but I think um, that adds to making the dress feel short, but it's it wasn't for me. I think they both go to my knees. I can pull up pictures if you want. <clears throat> It's short waisted, but the waist is really loose too. That's kind of what it feels like. It feels just kind of like floaty, you know? The, you would never know that my Mayo Soda dresses side by side are the same pattern. Length adjustments are easy, except <clears throat> the I think the issue with that one would be that you would feel like it was really big <clears throat> around the waist, like kind of sloppy big, not in a good way, not in a proportional, like evenly distributed way. I feel It would feel a little bit like you would want to taper it if you, if you lowered the waist. I am 5'4", a little over. <laughs> okay, um, let's put our interior pockets in. All right, so here's one. Here's the other. That and like that. Flip it over. You are, I am tall. <laughs> I'm not tall. <laughs> I'm not short, but I'm not tall. <laughs> I'm pretty average. I'm well over 5'4", but I'm not 5'5". Five five. Take what you can get, right? <laughs> oh, I missed it. I can see it. Yeah. I should have probably pinned that. Look at that. Let's get this a little better. See that little bit of slack right there? So let's just take it out right here. We just re-sew the section. Did I have, oh, you know, I wear clogs a lot. So I think people do assume I'm a little taller. That's probably true. I don't remember you being short though. I don't think you're short. Adina took my old plotter. Did you get that going? All right, there's one and let's do this one here. <clears throat> you wear three inch heels. Oh, I could never do that. <laughs> well, if I have to wear heels, I do this little thing where I get, um, I get sticky sandpaper and I glue it to the bottom of my shoes. <laughs> So they're grippy on the floor. <laughs> and then I just make sure that I don't like cross my legs in a way all night where people can see underneath my shoes. So it doesn't look good. <laughs> There's probably some product out there that does that, um, but I just never even thought to look to see if other people feel slippery in shoes like that. And maybe it was the shoes I was wearing at the time, but now I just do that. Yeah, that's why I figured school was your priority. They do sell those? Oh, that's awesome. See, I knew they probably sold something like that. I just used, um, I, I think I just glued um, sandpaper. I used double stick tape. That's what it was. You're five six and you're gonna add the tear. You're taller than me. 
Do you want to see pictures of mine, Andrea? I don't know if you've seen them. You can go, actually, if you just go to my website, soso.live, type in the search bar, Mayo, <laughs> Mayo Sodas, or Mayo, it'll pop up and you'll see pictures of me. And I think, hopefully both versions are there. You can see how it hits me. And it'll also tell you if I did something like that. I usually say, on this version, I lengthened it. On this version, I added a tear or whatever. So, all right, let's um, iron this. I think this map looks really cool um, without the border on it. I liked the border, but I really like it without the border. Yeah. What's our next step? I think our next step is the zipper fly. Because today has not been hard enough or risky enough. <laughs> I'm also a very, a very determined person, if you haven't noticed, so you know. Fanny's going to offer some new <laughs> That's a smart idea. That's so smart. I love that. <clears throat> oh, I forgot about that, Terry. Shoot. I didn't. I was also going to try and do the zipper sale, but I haven't been in the mood to shop for anything. You know what I mean? Right, Curtis? I know. There was someone um, in the chat yesterday, someone who spoke French. <laughs> they were like, wait, <laughs> I know that. <laughs> it's pretty funny. This one right here, this one was one of Maggie's. So she probably got it when she was in France. I don't know when. All of her things were like brand new still. But I know some of these souvenirs were very old. The, some of the jewelry that she got um, was really interesting. It is still on sale. You're not enabling that. Oh, you did, Curtis? How fun. The colors aren't great. Wait, where was the, where was the organza on sale again? Okay, I'm just going to tack this. It's not lining up perfectly. This one sticks above the waist. That one sticks below the waist. Sounds like a me problem. Okay, what's next? Front pockets. Oh, it's actually the butt patch and the welts. You know, I think I might do the full eye right now. What time is it? 12.50? <clears throat> yeah, just be careful with your pins. You can pin knits. I do too. 
I don't on camera because I just don't want to hear about it, but um, I do too. Or the clips. Okay, so the next thing is either the butt patch and the welts or, so if I went in order of the directions, it's butt patch, welts, side seams, cargo pocket, and flap, cargo pocket, then the fly. Personally, we're here. Why wouldn't we do the fly right now? Right? Oh, okay. It takes longer. I thought you were worried about catching it with your um, your serger. What do you guys vote? The I think the zippers are faster than the welts. Yeah, I like how knit sometimes clings to itself too. Oh, is that what it is? Well, yeah, you can. What are you talking about? Because the center back's not sewn. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, Terry. I'd already thought that through. I, I just won't do the center back seam. So then it would be still open. Because otherwise you're putting on the zipper with the backs attached on the sides with the pockets. And it just seems like a lot to deal with. Because what I think is you do the fronts, you have your fronts done, right? And then, um, <clears throat> then you do your welts to each back so that you, ha you only have to deal with that, right? So, okay. Let's do the zippers. All right, so here's my zipper selection. It's not good, is it? <laughs> so let's find our um, zipper shield. Right here. We need our zipper shield, our zippers, and our fronts right now. So I'm gonna move my camera, hopefully won't lose it again. And I'm gonna show you how I overlock the um, fly. Because I know that that's kind of a tricky area. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna clip up to the dot. Can you see my dot right there? Right there. Is the camera, for, it's not. I was probably just really still, <laughs> it happens. can't see it on this one. Maybe I did it on the, oh no, I ironed that. I like to clip because then I can overlock. This is such a steep clip. It's making me nervous, making me nervous. Move the camera. Oh no. <laughs> oh, it's two pieces. The thread's full. Oh, weird. All right, so I'm gonna do this kind of in a fussy way because I really like the I'm like how I'm doing it lately. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna serge this edge, and when I get down here, I'm going to cl cleanly end my tail. So we're just gonna start normal. Everything look okay? I can't see the camera over there; it's over my shoulder. All right, so when we get down to the end here. 
reach my thing. We're going to, I'm gonna hand crank my wheel with my, um, with, with my hand. <laughs> and we're gonna go one stitch off the edge, the cut edge there, right? But I'm gonna lift my needle up. You might have two needles, I only have one right now. And I'm gonna lift my presser foot up. And I'm gonna take my work, I'm gonna flip it over. Very gently, push the garment toward the bed of the machine. You don't want the threads to get stretched out, right? So just like kind of do that, right? And now we're gonna straighten it out, right? Straighten it out. I lift my presser foot out, straighten it out. All right, and then I kind of looking in there to make sure that it's kind of flat. Sometimes if I get a lot of slack in my threads, I will go to these and I just give them a little tug, 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 or tug up there actually, all right? All right, and now you can drop your knife. I'm not going to drop my knife. A lot of people can't drop their knife. Now I'm just gonna drop my presser foot though, and we're gonna sew. We're not going to cut these threads. You can hand wheel if you want, I can crank it. And I'm gonna lift my presser foot as I go. A little bit, little bit, little bit, like this. And now I'm just gonna go off the edge. I've never done this with a three thread. And so now at the end here, it's pretty clean finish. This is very thick thread. Yours is gonna look a lot nicer than mine. Mine's text 40. <laughs> Yours is got text 27. I'm gonna tighten this up right here. This little where I stopped. And just trim it off. Boop. All right, and we're gonna do that on all four. Okay, one. Um, if you want to start down here, like I like my surging, my right side of my surging to be on the right side of my garment, right? I'm a little fussy like that. What you can do, the way you start like this, is we're going to start like right here, go toward the end, do our flip, and go back up. So here we go. This is a... Uh, <clears throat> this is in the serger confidence thing. I just didn't do it on a fly. All right, we're coming down. Here is the cut edge. I'm gonna do one stitch off the edge, lift up my needle, lift up my presser foot, flip, keep the garment close. Like I kind of flip it and then I arrange things. So this time I did get some thread slack. So you see that little slack back there? So now I'm gonna go up here, right here. And we're going to tug, tug, tug. Do you see I got rid of that slack down there? Hopefully you could see that. Sorry, probably not. All right, so there were slack, now they're not slack. All right, and now, no one taught me to do that. I just figured it out the other day. I was like, I don't like that slack. I need to get this cord out of the way. Here we go. Let me make sure it's better. Here we go. All right, and now presser foot's down, knife is next to it. We're not gonna cut these threads. And I keep adjusting, I lift my presser foot up and I'm pulling like this a little bit. I'm gonna cut this tail off, my starting tail. And now we can just go all the way to the end and go off the edge. We don't need to be fussy at the waist. We're just trying to get a nice clean finish. Look at that, hubba hubba. All right, let's do two more. Ooh, what? What was this? Is it bounce? Oh, is it bouncing? Why didn't you guys tell me it's bouncing? I'm so sorry. Is it bouncing really bad? I forgot. Oh my gosh. Is it bouncing really bad? Let me see. A little bit. Yeah, that's too bad. Hmm. I'm gonna hold it. <laughs> that help at all? I'm gonna go slow, how about that? All right, one stitch off the edge, needle up, press her foot up, flip the garment. Arrange. See all my thread tails, how they're kind of loose in there? I'll show you now, I'm gonna cinch them each up on the top. I'm just pulling those threads up there like I showed you before. Now they're snug. And now we're going to sew our curve. I'll do it, try and do it slowly so it doesn't vibrate. 
trim that tail off, and then we'll go up to the top. Sorry, I forgot that the, um, I was using the serger, so look at that. So nice. All right, um, one more. I'm gonna go fast just to get down there. <laughs> so this won't work unless you do this clip first, right? Okay, here we are again. I go off the edge, there's the edge. Lift, flip. You guys have seen me evolve with this. So you know I started from doing this terribly to getting it done. So it just took practice. And then when I go off the edge, I kind of pull it so it goes off at a right angle the best I can. Like that, see that? This little tail will get in our rest of our stitching. So, all right. Boop. Let's move the camera back where we like it. Oh, I know, the, the, the thread catcher is really nice. <laughs> belt loop. Yeah, so there we go. Look at that. Looks really good. You don't have this little tail hanging off. If you do these a lot, you understand why I go to that little bit of effort because it just makes a big difference on the inside there, which can look kind of messy. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to sew the center front. And you're going to do go down from the notch here at the, is there a notch at the waist? Where's the notch? Oh, there's no notch. So we're going to base this together, <clears throat> get this all nice and flat. Um, just, I'm going to kind of line it all up like as if I'm sewing it all the way around, but I'm not, right? We're going to go through our pockets here. Not my favorite, I have to admit. Um, the there's probably a little, is there something there? Is there, I think like I can see this line I drew on here. So that must be it. Yeah, so there's the line. So basically it's like three eighths of an inch away from this edge here and along this edge here. And you're gonna go all the way down, but we're just gonna baste it to the bottom of this um, dot or to the dot, not bottom of the dot, to the dot. And then we're going to put it back to our regular stitch length and finish the crotch curve, all right? So, did you really come unthreaded? Really? You had to do that, Phoenix? Come on. Yeah, it kind of is. <laughs> not, not the kind of thing my husband needs. What's nice about it is that they do kind of hang... Um, flush with the pant, you know, so. All right, so I'm just trying to line up this with the waist seam. And I just feel like there should be a notch or something and I don't like this. <laughs> I'm gonna look at this again. Okay, right here. Maybe that was a notch and I just saw the line and I just assumed. I know better though. <laughs> Okay, there's, there it is right there, okay. Basting stitch right now. If you need to draw a line straight to the dot, go for it. You do want pretty much straight. All right, here's the dot, and now I'm gonna switch to my regular length, and I'm gonna back stitch. <clears throat> and we're just gonna finish out the rise. Like this. So here we go. <laughs> a 
Well, I mean, today hasn't been that smooth, Adina. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Some days are better than others. <laughs> this is so lumpy. Look at that. This needs an extra top stitch. Let's just do it. It's too thick. Why did I just backstitch? I don't know. All right, let's do this one too. Just trying to mash it down a little better. Not my best sewing today, but you know. Technically it's accurate. All right. So now let's lay this all on here again. That little corner just keeps flipping out. I don't like that. I hate it when that happens. Like this is falls that short right there. Like why? There, there's not enough seam allowance to compensate for that. So where am I going wrong there? You know? Same with over here. It's really annoying. Okay. So right sides together. These are a lot thicker. So it's a little fussier. There's the line right there. I was watching um, Tomcat Stitchery's video today on her like July sewing plans. And I love how she was like, um, sewing is my ride or die. I was like, yes, exactly. Sewing is my ride or die. <laughs> I get it. All right, there's the notch right there that I created. Um, ugh. This looks like it's going so much further over. It's why I'm fussing a little bit. Okay, basting stitch down to the dot. Regular stitch. Back stitch. Finish out the curve. And now we're gonna overlock this and I'm gonna do the same fussy junk where I'm gonna go here and then do the flipper, flippy do thing. So um, I'm just gonna do this over here. A little trickier since it's at an angle. And these are thicker. Oof. A lot of slack that time. Mainly because this is so thick. Did the whole seam twice. There we go. Little loop there.
go. This one's harder to see where the beginning is. Okay. There we go. Now we're ready. Let's do this one first. It'll be a little easier since it's thinner fabric at least. All right, so you're gonna press your fly open. This is why I don't like these is because it creates this ridge right here. So I'm gonna go press it just to make sure that we're actually gonna get that nice and flat. Um, if, you, if it's pretty thick, you might consider hammering it, just saying. <laughs> So press this open and then press your crotch seam here to your left or the wearer's left of the pants. Like that. Same on my other pair. Okay, bye menu. Oh. Pull to get it nice and smooth so I don't get like a little ridge on the right side and then I flip it and check it. I have kind of a ridge here though. Let's, let's iron that from the right side. Let me really firm. Making sure those threads aren't a problem. Okay, let me double check this front. It looked pretty good though. What is this right here? Oh, that is my, oh yeah, good thing we looked at that. I didn't quite enclose the circle. Let me show you. You guys are sweet. See right, right here, I didn't quite catch my circle there. So let's fix that. And I think what I'll do is remove the basting stitch up here and just redo it. Oof. Okay, it's thick enough that I can't just rip it. Oh well. Probably better. It'll be really noticeable if I um, damage the little threads there. I'm just trying, I'm in a rush. I shouldn't be. <laughs> you know how it is. Okay, right there at that little juncture. I'm gonna get rid of all these threads, otherwise they will definitely be immortalized. Because you can't, once we get going on this, we're not gonna be able to be inside here ever again. We're already gonna have a basting stitch that lives there forever. So we don't really wanna add to it or the potential for little threads to be kind of poking out little, you know, stitch holes and things, so and get rid of them all. All right, so let's stitch this a little better now. Probably should have used black <laughs> interfacing, but um, I don't actually have any on a bolt. All right, so right here, we're gonna do our regular seam up to that little circle. Right there, back stitch. Now switch to my basting stitch the rest of the way. Let's make sure my pocket has been, um, let's try and line this up actually perfectly because we've already ironed this too. Oh sheesh, oh sheesh, there we go. Just trying to line up my stitch holes so that I don't create new ones, basically. And I pressed this open so the pocket 
edges are trying to open up. Yeah, look at that, see? We're just gonna do it right here. It's just a basting stitch. But let's try and get rid of some of these threads. All right. <laughs> no, I didn't figure that out. I'm just going with it. I, I think it should go to the top personally because this is this is actually where your button and buttonhole go. But you do have the pocket, like the thickness of the pocket. So, all right. That's better. <clears throat> Let me make sure. I'm just so worried I'm not going to catch it in there. But look, there's my clip. And there's my clip. So we're good. All right. So now um, from the right side, make sure all this is pressed open really nicely. Make sure the crotch curve here is pressed to your right now or the wearer's left of the pants, right? Let's move everything out of the way. Clear the decks a little bit here. And we're going to top stitch the center front only on the right hand side. So the left pant, but on your right as you're facing your pants right now. We're going to top stitch it all the way down. So we're only doing one side of the fly, but we're going to do both sides of the fly curve. Okay. I'm being really firm. This is going to show in the end, so, you know, do a nice stitch. I <laughs> keep, like, don't want to move all this stuff off the floor there. There you go. Just like that. All right? Yeah, I'm not sure. I It may just be a way to reduce bulk. I don't know. Okay, so it looks like on the inside, so it's pressed that way and that way, all right. So now grab your zipper, and we're gonna put it face down. Wait, let's get rid of this thread right here. I want you to take your shorts and you put them right sides together, like that, but leave your fly open, just like this. And give, it, give that bottom layer a nice little tug because you don't want it to kind of like fold over, right? So here we go. And we're going to put your zipper face down. Now, this is where I went wrong last year and um, acted like I had a waistband, but I don't. I have a facing. So this, the head of your zipper needs to be two inches, I think, away from the um, waist seam. I wrote it down. Yeah so far away. <laughs> That's so far away. <laughs> Where is a ruler? And I'm just about there. I'm a little bit like right there. So usually if you ever listen to my zipper tutorials, what I tell you is to line up your tape to the bottom of your fly facing here because we want to make sure that the stop is well away from this curve when we go to top stitch it, right? And right now, if I put this two inches below, this is getting pretty close. So what you're looking at is, can my presser foot go right here, right? However many rows that I want. Hi, Bonnie, how's it going? So, you know, see like that? And I, I got it, right? It's barely, <laughs> barely. You might need to switch to your zipper foot, which I'm going to do because the brass zipper is a little bit more um, hard for me to fake not getting by. Okay. 
Yeah, he wears his others a lot. The, I Now that I'm making this again, I have some things I probably would like to adjust for the way I like to sew it. All right, so we're gonna put this face down. We're gonna sew on the right hand side here, but you can see how my tape splays out. The, the brass zippers are kind of a problem that way. They're very thick, so I'm gonna try and straighten this out. See how I'm just straightening it out like that. I'm gonna put this in there. Um, I'm not gonna go all the way to the end of the tape. I'm gonna start close to the head. And the tape is going right to the seam. She calls it the fold. Uh, it's the seam right there. That's what she means. Back stitch, and now pick this up, right? So look, watch, we're just going to go boop, like that. Mr. McGoo. <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> Can I go all the way to the top? and edge stitch that. I can, right? So could I could have done this. What if I did this? I think that's what we want to do. I'm going to fold this tape over. Like that. See that? Right? Pretty sure that's what I want. I'd much rather take out top stitching than anything else. So we're gonna go straight down from the top, all the way down, like that. Okay, so it's looking like this. All right, now the thing I, I like to do now is, um, you can keep, actually keep your pants together. Well, just, just open it up like this. Now we're gonna turn your pants upside down like this. All right, turn your pants upside down. This is how we just left it. And now take this and flop it over, flop, to this other fly facing. Put your pants back right sides together. And you can just line this up. Make sure this is nice and flat. You don't want like a, a bubble, you know, like this, you know, inside there, like some space. Make that nice and flat. The fly facing is pretty narrow though. I'm barely gonna catch my zipper there. Makes me a little nervous, look at that. I'm barely gonna catch it. So good thing I have my zipper foot out. It's gonna be hard to get two rows, but we're gonna stitch it to just the fly facing. And it's hard because um, the brass zipper really bullies your presser foot. Ooh, do I wanna pull this down? I'm gonna pull the tape down again. I don't normally do that because it's going into a waistband. Look at that, it's kind of wiggly. I'm going to sew another row. Wait, let me backstitch. <laughs> you do have zipper hanging past the facing. Don't you stop it two inches below? Zipper tape's pretty wide, but a brass zipper, that's pretty standard. The fly facing could be wider. Write that down. <laughs> I need to write all these little things down. And I'm gonna. It's my stream. I can do whatever I want. Right? <laughs> Tape hanging over the edge. Oh, yeah. That's what I think. I, like, it just kind of, it kind of, um, when I saw that, I was like, wait, it just kind of reminded me of it. So I'm hoping that's right. I got this one kind of funky. Widen, fly facing, um, fix pocket facings to match pocket length and shape because I changed it. Uh, add waist notch for center front seam. These are all my notes. <laughs> you don't have to do this. But if I'm gonna make this again, you know. Okay, here we are. So now uh, it's time to top stitch down the fly facing. Let's trim our threads here. I thought I saw another thread over oh, right here. This thread right here, what is that? Oh, that's my back stitch thread. Get rid of that. Mm. Yeah, okay. All right, so from the right side, we're gonna stitch our fly facing down. Ugh. 
it's so it's so narrow right there. It's kind of a bummer. Look at that. It's really narrow. I don't like that. Plus, look at how ugly that is right there. This facing should be wider. This is not okay to me. The fly shield's gonna solve that, but it's gonna, the fly shield is gonna be sewn to this edge. So the fly shield's gonna cover up that. You're still gonna see that right there. So yeah, maybe I can go like this. I don't know, I don't like that. I'd probably remove the pocket stay. If I made these again, I would just make the pocket go straight up right here. There's no reason it needs to do that, especially on my guy, he's pretty small, so that there's not this like um, big difference between the center front and the pocket, but that's so messy to me. I'm worried about stitching down this fly facing right now. Cause look, this is right here. This is the bump. <laughs> All right, this is one thing I've learned that my hair marker can do, which is kind of cool, is um, I'm gonna trace the fly right now and it'll show up on the right side. So I'm just going alongside the fly facing right here. Like that. And see, there's my line. I almost want to take my basting stitch out right now so that I can um, move my zipper up and down. What's the danger in that? <laughs> I mean, why not? You do your first pass on the inside. Ooh, I don't like my bobbin enough, but kind of thinking that's a good idea on this one. It's just so narrow. All right, and let's switch to the, don't do it with your zipper foot. Well, my, I can't do it with my zipper foot. My zipper foot's too narrow for top stitching. It would be even wigglier than what you see me doing today. That interfacing, yeah. Well, the shield's gonna cover up some, but this is this bugs me right here. All right, we're gonna try it from the inside because I think it's just really, I don't wanna do that. <laughs> I have a way I really like top stitching my fly. How could I prevent this? I, you know, my problem with a seam, Anthony, is that you can see the zipper from the right side of the pant. So my problem with the seamed kind of fly is that um, usually the zipper is way too close to the center front seam and you see the zipper when people are walking around. So that's kind of my problem. Um, I'm only doing it this method because it's in the instructions. <laughs> I have another way I really like doing it. I just didn't want to change that. Okay, I'm gonna take a big chance. I'm gonna do my, my little top stitching thing from the inside and I just don't see how it's gonna go well, but let's just check it out. All right, okay, wait, we already have one row top stitch and that's that right there, okay. Let's not do it at a basting stitch. 
Yeah, that's the other thing is that some machines can't sew all the way through all that layer. But you don't really have to sew through that except at the beginning. I have a new way I like doing my fly. That's why I was really hesitating. <laughs> I just got a wiggly stitch. I think it jumped. Maybe we can put the bar tack there. All right, uh, let's pull this over. I don't think I'm gonna make it. Jeez Louise. Okay, it's acceptable. <laughs> It's okay. But look at my bobbin thread does not look as good as my top stitch. Look at the difference. This is why I always do it from the right side. Yeah. One row, that's all we're doing here. All right, where's my fly shield? That is back in the bin here. All right, so we're gonna sew across both the top and the bottom of the fly shield. Usually you only have to do one end. I just use the fly facing. I don't, I don't, um, I don't have a problem figuring out the shape, you know? It's the fact that I had no clearance next to that zipper. And the zipper foot is even wigglier. You know what I mean? Here, let's iron this really quick. Oh, actually, let's just sew our other fly facing and then we can iron them both at the same time because I'm about to sew this one too. And maybe we can fix that little clearance issue because it's gonna be harder on this one. Okay. Iron this. Oh, I, I really thought I had the um, corner poked out, didn't I? <laughs> okay. I did. It was the very first thing I wrote. <laughs> A wider fight fly shield. Oh yeah. Mother trucker. Okay. I'm going to, um, what's the point of the shield? I mean, it's, it's actually go goes right here. <laughs> this is not okay. What's happening like that? I don't like this. Okay. Um, it's just we have all that. Okay. I wonder if I could fake it, stitch it to this. It's just ugly. That won't change anything, Terry. It gets sewn to this edge. If I made it wider, it would just stick out over here. It's not gonna change the fact that it doesn't cover up this. You see what I mean? Yeah. I'm gonna overlock this. I'll, let me sh I'll show you how I do this. I do the same thing as the, the little tricksy thing, you know? So, um, can you please stretch further? <laughs> Maybe not. I'll try and turn this too. Okay, so uh, this time I'm gonna do both top and bottom with a nice neat surging. So we're gonna start down there and come up to the top.
You get one stitch off, needle up, presser foot up, flip, line it back up in there, tighten up your threads if you have to. It's usually just the loopers. Don't trim what you've sewn with the knife. What's that? Okay. I thought that was something getting sucked up there. All right, now we're gonna do it in reverse. Nice and clean. I got that nailed now. No, I can't. Um, I'll show you why I can't. Like I can, but it won't make a difference. I'll show you why. This is also, the, uh, learning how to do this is also in my manual of my serger, by the way. Um, so I, if I cut a wider, so the shield need, still needs to sew to this seam right here. If I make it wider, it just makes it wider. It does not cover up this, because it's not going that way. It's not doing this, which is what I want, right? Yeah, exactly what Terry just said. Yeah, so unfortunately. Yeah, I know, Adina. It's just annoying when you know better. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so now we're gonna, um, but just let's just admire the top and bottom of my shield. No, what needs to happen is the fly facing needs to be wider so that this would all be over here more. If it were wider, you'd be a little bit this way, you know? This is hecka annoying though. I, I want this to be attached to this somehow. Like, mm. I didn't change the instructions on this either. Okay, so. This is the side I want to show. Yeah, okay. The interfacing could be narrower though. Like that wouldn't hurt, you know. Which side do I like better? So I'm trying to decide <laughs> of my surging. <laughs> I've kind of this year not been sewing a lot of, like not buying new patterns and things. I, I, I love sewing people's patterns and things, but I don't wanna buy any more patterns if I don't really have to or don't want to, you know? I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> But for this one, shift and have the seam line a little on the shield. Yeah, I could do that. That's what I was wondering too. Like this just doesn't even go far enough. So let's, um, let's undo the basting stitch on this and see if I can maybe like finesse it. That's what I'm thinking too. 
might do that on my other pair over there. But basically your, your fly is done except for bar tacking the shield, which I will do in a second, but I want to check something. If I can kind of change it. I don't usually remove my bathing spacing stitch like this. I'm being a little too um, impatient. So let's, because I like to remove it so you get a nice long stitch. I keep seeing my phone light up. I'm hoping my daughter isn't trying to tell me something. I, I don't like removing basting from interfacing. It's so hard, isn't it? Where is it? Where's the back stitch? There's the back stitch. Okay, let's move it right here. Deep concentration so that I only grab the stitch. Okay, let's see, I'm, I'm close. Remember I have two rows of, of basting in this one spot because I sewed it over again. All right, so let's see if I can finesse that. Oof, it's messy looking. I'm gonna pull on this really hard, <laughs> cut it, and it'll just suck back in there. All right. Where's my ice cream cone? Something I ask often during the day. Did I tell you guys about that ice cream my husband got from Costco? <laughs> it's so dang rich I can't eat it. And I'm like an ice cream champ, you guys. I can't eat it, it's too rich. And I don't eat diet ice cream. I can't grab this little thread. All right, so let's see here. Can I maybe stitch? Yeah, look at this. It's just like not even in there anymore. So let's let's um do this. I'm gonna stitch it. I'm gonna like pin this. Now, this is a stitch that would show, but not really like to the world if I stitch through all these layers. You know, like I could just do a little stitch right here. Oh, really? Gelato, gelato is kind of rich, isn't it? Yeah, so I was kind of surprised and I was like, wow, I can't finish this. And I, I thought that's weird. Like I thought something was wrong with me. <laughs> And then um, the next day, or maybe when I took my bowl down the stairs, I looked at it again. I was like, what's up with this stuff, you know? It's just vanilla. And, okay, look at this, let's see. How far do you think I can go down? Because there's a lot hanging right there too, um, which will get bar tacked in. All right, so what if I, what if I just kind of stitched here straight up? I think that's what I'm gonna do. I really wanna do it from the right side, but you know. Anyway, I looked at the container and um, the ca ca I never look at calories for ice cream. I just buy the same ice cream all the time. I really like it, I eat it. It's mint chip, it's Briars. That's it, that's what I like. The 
calorie content for, or calorie, whatever count for the vanilla was 360 for two thirds of a cup. For my mint chip, it's um, 180. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's, it wasn't even 180, it was like maybe a little less than that. I was like, oh my gosh, this is almost a third more or half, 50% more. Some of my homeboy, boy, you can't take out. I tell you guys that father, you have a case of, oh, it's, it's, oh, you do? That's cute. All right, I'm just gonna put a sneaky top stitch right here. I think I'm off of the facing or shield now. Yeah, I fell off right there. Dang it. But it does look better on the inside, doesn't it? All right, maybe I'll fig figure that out a little later. Yeah, I know, Anthony. Anthony, I know. <laughs> nah, he didn't. He, he, I'm sure he did not have a sample of the ice cream. I don't mind the stitching, but it's not very straight. But that looks better. No, you're fine, Anthony. <laughs> you're fine. I know you're trying to help. This will look a little better when it's like a facing like that, maybe. I don't know. It's just, ugh. I was really looking forward to this project and I feel like it's just not going as good, you know? Okay, so let's look at this here. Here's my zipper tape. Now, the zipper tape is just too freaking narrow. But what if we move it over like this, okay? And we sew it kind of like that, right? So three eighths of an inch away from the, from this edge. All right, and then we, we flip it and we top stitch it like this, right? Then we flip and top stitch like this. Poor Anthony, I probably scared him off. I hope not. <laughs> right? Then we go like this. Oh, that makes it way worse. Of course. Okay, okay, okay. So we need to go the other way. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna go away from, we're gonna just barely, we're either barely catching it on this side or that side. So if we barely catch it on this side, right? I think this is the better one to, um, Barely catch it on. All right, and then we top stitch it. And then flip this over like this. That's even worse. What what can I do to make this better? <laughs> I want it to be like this. Let's go backwards. All right. We're now in experiment phase. That's how I want that to be, right? And then that means that this is like this, right? So if we line up the tape with the edge here, All right, okay, so that's what I did the first time. 
All right, and then we top stitch it. I'm too hungry to um, kind of blend in the things I do. Okay, and then we flip it over. Yeah, it's just too narrow. It's really narrow. Nothing I do helps. That's too far over. That is closer to the center. If I want it like this. I was on the right track with the reverse engineering exactly. Right? This is what I want. Right? Is it more like I need to like be barely on here? Like that? But there isn't a, um, that's, I think what I'm doing is folding this wrong. I'm kind of confusing myself, right? So, yeah, because this is just folded over flat like that. Okay. Yeah, so this is what we need. We need something like this. I am hungry. I know I am hungry. <laughs> but I'm determined. I'm, I'm fine, though. Don't worry about me. I was in a weird mood when I started today, so that didn't help. All right, let's get that like this. And like this. This is, we like this, right? This feels like the way you do it with thread theory. Okay, I'm taking this out. We're gonna hold this. Yeah, I think that this is it, right? You know what, I think I was right before, but you know what I did was I unfolded it. And I was like, what's wrong? <laughs> so if I fold it, if I sew it like that, right? If I sew it like that, so that I end up with that. I got it. I need to do it to just this there. I am going on three hours. Yeah, probably. <laughs> I'm sorry, Dean. I know. My usually my spatial sense kicks in, and it's just not kicking in right now. All right. So if I sew it like this, right? I flip it. Look at, there's barely room over here to flip it, but look at, it covers this up a little better, right? Wider, okay, we like that. All right, and now we've top stitch it, boom. Mm -mm -mm. Right, we turn the pan over. We flop it, and we didn't get what I originally intended, but look, at least I have all this room here. I'm happy with that. Phew. <laughs> okay, so let's take out this, and we need to make sure we have two inches 
So basically lining up the zipper tape so that um, I have a, like a fat half inch on the right here. I'm looking for my, zip, my uh, not my zipper, my ruler. Yeah, so that's like a half inch right there, a, a fat half inch. I'm sticking with the ha fat half inch. And then we have the zipper still centered. See, I had it right when I first, first, reverse in, first reverse engineered it, but then I flopped it wrong. Okay, we're gonna slide this down. We need it two inches from the top. Don't forget that part, trust me. <laughs> right, just like this. Like this, like this. We got that zipper. It's like right up against the seam there. I'm gonna pull the tape down again because I still think that's the right thing to do. Uh, I'm gonna put my zipper foot in. Wham. Yeah, exactly, Andrea. I will try to top stitch closer to the zipper te teeth, but the head of the zipper is massive. Okay. Pull the zipper tape down, right angle. Phew, okay. Plenty of room right here too, by the way. I was keeping an eye on that. Now we're gonna top stitch. I still think we flip and top stitch from the top. For the facing, I don't think I'm not thinking of something there. I'm not saying that the pocket still isn't kind of weird under there though. There's definitely some weirdness, but look at that. Now we cover this especially if we can get this in there, right? All right, now let's flop it over on this side and at least we have more room, not much. Not much though, huh? Okay, pulling the zipper tape down at right angle again got that one nicer this time. I'm gonna do a second row just for security. Okay. How's things looking? That looks better, right? We've covered this up. <laughs> yeah, it was a group effort. <laughs> it was definitely a group effort. Um, uh, I did that so fast that I'm kind of turned around on my steps now. So now we want to um, top stitch down the fly. Right? No, don't unthread the needle. <laughs> I keep thinking I get it in there and I don't. Ugh, there we go. Yeah, I think that looks a lot better. Yeah, I totally agree. I sometimes just wish I I just had the like, I don't know, I, I, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't even say that, but I, it'd be nice to be like, sell like little packs where it's like, get this little expansion pack for this pattern it will make it go together a little nicer, but I feel like it's kind of insulting too, because you know what? Zipper tape could be different where this pattern was designed in the world. The zipper tape could be narrower. Zipper teeth could be narrower, you know? Maybe my zipper's too chunky for this. There's a lot of um, things to consider, right? It does not change how huge the zipper head is. Yeah, exactly, Shim, that's so true. You just gotta get over the regret that they're not all like that, right? <laughs> 
So maybe I want my, my zipper foot for this, you know? I, I think I can get by that. Let's see. Um, let's do my, my hair marker though. Okay. Okay, so this is, look at, do you see this? Yeah, I just did a job for someone and I was like, you know, you guys require a nine inch zipper for this. I used a five inch and I could have used a four and a half inch, <clears throat> but they put the zipper in there for all sizes. So, you know. There we go. I would have cried if I would have ran a bobbin thread just now. Um, all right, the zipper shield. Look at that. That looks so much nicer right now. I don't like this little ridge, though. You know? Yeah, right, Shem? But there's so many very... I'm telling you, I think... I don't know if you were there when I told you guys about the zipper, the YKK catalog. It is... It, it is truly an infinite number of variations. It is so terrifying when you first order from them. Okay, so this, this doesn't go, where did I put this? Oh, I put this to the top, don't do that. <laughs> you want this 3 eighths of an inch away. What was I thinking? Oh my gosh. Okay, you want this 3 eighths of an inch away from your waist seam, you guys. I did that like as if it was a waistband. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So you need this finished edge to be below your seam here. <laughs> I'll fix that one. Oh man. At least I know why I did that. <laughs> Just habit, you know? All right, so I'm gonna line this up, leave three eighths of an inch up there at the top. And we're gonna stitch this together. Like that, okay? No, exactly. There's too many variables. There's literally too many variables. Like they, there's no way they could do that. What they could say is that your zipper should measure this. That the tape should be this wide, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. I do. I learn so much. <laughs> um, this the stitching is like man, I, the pocket curve right here. The look here. <laughs> that looks nice though. Look at that. Moo. Manu. We're getting punchy now. Okay, a uh, bar tack. My pocket stitching looks kind of bad. All right, put the bar tack on. Uh, I don't do a regular bar tack, I just do my machine. <laughs> I don't do a zigzag. Feel free to do a real bar tack. I'm trying not to let that bum me out. I'm gonna also do one right here, I think. Maybe right here. That should be a harder corner, but I just didn't get it quite right. So maybe I'll fake it. Like that. Man. Not my best sewing, but it's been a journey. 
Okay. You sew mine at the top. You sew what ears at the top? <laughs> You can't sew this to the top. Don't do that because we have a waist facing here. That's why I didn't do that. And I got to remove this one and I top stitched it down and everything. Yeah, I know. I know, Shem, exactly. I'm going to do that off camera though. I won't put you through that. I'm going to try and clean this up. And um, at least when I lower it down, it will cover a little more of this, I guess, you know. So, all right, you guys. Thanks for suffering through today's stream with me. We're on our way. We're on our way. We have welt pockets on Saturday. I tell you, I've got sent those as a cinch, but you know, I doubt you're going to believe me right now. <laughs> um, I know you live for this stuff. I thought we'd be a little bit further though. We do have quite a bit to go. It was a journey, but Saturday we have longer. We have more time, so. That's good. I'm glad. All right. Well, I'll see you guys Saturday, hopefully. And I hope your cargo shorts are going way better than mine. And if um, maybe I prevented you from doing any of these things. So, now yeah, thanks, Curtis. I'm glad. All right, you guys. Let's leave a nice little parting shot, right? With my incorrect fly shield. <laughs> oh, thanks for the hearts, Ray. I bet that's you. <laughs> Bye, you guys. <laughs>